questions. This is the tangent element selection of panels. It's a modular connection, so there really is uh, four separate modules over here. The one on the right has a uh, trackball and a wheel, and this is primarily for um, navigating around the timeline. And we could play, stop, rewind, jump to different parts of the timeline. Um, and it also allows us to use different zoom modes in the timeline. On the left hand side, um, over here we have a few buttons and here we can add and delete keyframes. But more importantly, uh, these four buttons over here allow us to edit our overall uh, offset gamma and gain, which are these three middle wheels, which we'll get to a second. Um, the uh, shadows, midtones, and highlights. And on the middle section, this is where we have three trackballs and an outside wheel. And it's the exact same mechanism here, just in, in three places. And the trackball feels like a, a regular trackball in here. And as I start to move this around, you'll see offset and gamma and gain will move uh, accordingly inside here. There's also reset buttons for the outside wheel or the inside uh, trackball so you can quickly just turn that on and off and there's also an overall before and after so if you hold the B key down over here you get a before and after. What's uh, nice about this is there's a certain amount of resistance you'll notice that as I flick these they they stop pretty quickly so um, and they're in very fine increments which can be changed in speed grade um, in in the preferences but there's a nice feel inside here and, and actually they're magnetic so there is a, a piece of plastic that that is on here with with uh, metal on here that the magnets stick to and then you can remove the ball for shipping purposes but this mechanism has a certain a really nice uh, feeling of viscosity there's a there's a certain uh, tension inside here that I really really like this makes all the difference when you're moving these wheels around and, and you can spin them really quite fast to make large movements in here so it's not like you're just limiting yourself to only small tiny fine movements a uh, generous amount of spinning here gets you there uh, very quickly uh, to the left of, of that is um, our dials and this will help you control it, it won't replace these at all it's actually going to be moving the slider so as soon as I touch the input uh, saturation slider I'm either adding or removing saturation they also have a reset point so these are resets specifically with these buttons outside but by pushing this down you can reset that also so here is uh, buttons for contrast overall temperature, magenta, and then the rest of them, uh, they're, they're shown down here in this display. So th this is primarily just for uh, the grading buttons now that would also work in overall shadow, midtone, and highlights. So they also have uh, functions in both of, of all four of those tabs, but they are specific. So if I wanted to change, for instance, Let's say that I wanted to change the temperature of the highlights. I go to highlights, temperature, and start changing that. And now I'm changing the overall temperature just of the highlights in there. And you can see I've got some pretty blue sails inside here. And again, to reset, push that down, and I reset that. Go back to my overall. On the left of that is really the workhorse, and that's these uh, buttons. And, and it's modal because we only have a limited amount of buttons and they're replacing making selections in here of what you're doing. For instance, like the main menu. If I go up to my main menu, I'm primarily editing a master clip, a clip, or a mask. So if I click on clip, it takes me to clip. If I go to, to master clip, it takes me to the master clip, and then takes me out of that mode to uh, my layer mode and mask mode. So if I wanna go back to clip layers, I gotta go back out to main, over to clip, and now I'm into the clip mode. Okay, so uh, I'm just going to reset uh, all of this in here <clears throat> and grade this particular uh, sailboat scene inside here. What I love about these controls and the way that they work with um, the temperature and magenta is you'll notice that I have my uh, RGB parade in here and you can see that the levels are uh, 
they're not equal. It, it's definitely a less warm of a shot. It's a cool shot with a lot of blue in it. And I just want to show you how I would balance that out. I would go to my temperature control and as I'm moving this left and right, there's a bit of a teeter-totter effect between the red and the blue. And I'm not even looking at the green. I'm just balancing the red and the blue simply by moving that one dial. And you can see in the finest little increments how the, what, what kind of a difference that makes inside here very very nice and now the green tends to be a little bit higher so if I go to the magenta setting and move that now I'm moving the magenta against or sorry the green against the red and blue and with two simple dials I have neutralized this scene from overly blue to more neutral now although it is neutral that looks like muddy water and um, it, it's not good so I probably don't want to neutralize this I'm going to actually keep this in the blue side of things so back over to my overall this is my offset gamma gain and this of course is is shadow gain is highlights gamma is some people would consider this a mid-tone when I'm in overall it is overall light so when I change this it will have an effect on the highlights it's less of an effect when I'm in shadow mid-tone and highlights <clears throat> but you can see in my RGB parade I've got some room down to the bottom so I'm going to bring this down and crush my uh, blacks a bit and then conversely I'll open this up and and this again is let me just reset those this is the nice thing about having three controls in that I can spin these at the same time. Same kind of contrast inside here and see how far I'm pushing it. I'm starting to blow out those sails in here so maybe I don't want to push that too much and maybe I want to pull my mid-tones up at the same time. And again, I don't care about the numbers. All I know is that I'm looking at my main display and moving these around until I get something I like and something that's nice in here. I'm going to jump to my highlights here and pull them down and bring back a little bit of those sails inside here. So that was before and that's after and I could save that grade down at the bottom uh, very easily and uh, use that in my my uh, my look stores down at the bottom and replace them all right let's talk about jumping over here to this section and I've got uh, two clips over here on the right hand side Uh, this is my Blackmagic camera, Blackmagic cinema camera, and I'm trying to uh, match this clip here, which is a Canon 5D Mark II, and they look vastly different. This one has massive uh, saturation over here, and this one is a bit more contrasty and punchy. So to try to match these, um, I'm going to select the clip I want to edit, and this time I'll use my mouse and click on the two up and then drag this one over to here. And I'm trying to match these, and a good way to do this is to find a place where I can match the background. So you can see in my clip, the background is definitely blown out. So I'm gonna to jump to my overall highlights and start to pull this down inside here. And you can see, I get pretty darn close. And while I'm moving this down, I'm going to be moving my middle gamma at the same time and see where, where the two meet and disappear into each other. Now we've got a bit of a gradient on the left, so I can't match it completely, but I can definitely match uh, what's going on inside here. So that's before, that's after. I, I match the overall... Um, <clears throat> The overall lightness uh, for the most part and maybe take that down a little bit more and maybe a bit of the uh, input saturation on the overall I'll take my saturation down a little bit and match those well, a bit too much there we go from there to there and I've done that so I could also save that as a grade now back over to this middle section in here turn off two up and I'll talk about one area that um, we definitely like some fine control and that's with the secondary I'll show you before and after and you can see 
really what I've done here is I'm affecting the face because it's pretty dark and uh, it's, it's very saturated. So I've created a secondary in here. And to be able to see the secondary, um, I'm going to go to my Alt um, display in here. So this Alt button on the buttons is taking me between two modes. The first mode is setting up the, um, the colors, uh, my my layers and uh, masks. Um, and the second one is turning on and off these uh, indicators of where my mat, where my secondary is. So you still need to grab the mouse and grab the eyedropper and then move directly into this window and select the skin tone, which I've already done. Um, and then these controls, which are very, very uh, touchy and hard to use with a mouse, but they're unbelievably easy when you're into the dials. So notice my dials are no longer affecting um, my main offset gamma and gain, they're now affecting the range. So there's my hue, lightness, and saturation. So if my lightness value is too much, you can see that as I move this around, I'm grabbing different lightness values inside here, and I can change the overall range of how much of that lightness is going on, and the tween between that. So how far does that move out? And trying to do this with a mouse, let me tell you, is unbelievably touchy. But doing this with these controls is incredible. So when people are uh, using secondaries in speed grade and they're just using a mouse, uh, it is definitely something that's difficult to use. So I can turn on and off that indicator area um, and then go back and show you my before and after inside there. So that's a little bit of mouse. Um, and then controls inside here. Now that I've got that defined in my secondary, then I can move this anywhere I want. So you can see I can move this to um, push this to any area I want in that mid-tone or completely reset that or lighten that up if I want. And before and after and maybe darken up the shadows in there at the same time I'm lightening up that area. Okay, uh, the last thing I want to show you is working with a mask, which is pretty darn cool. So let's go to our Kendo guy right here, and let's add a mask inside here. So we've got to go back to the main menu, and up at the top, um, I'm going to go to Clip, and I'm going to, and I believe this is a bit of a, a, bit of a bug, there we go, back to clip, and I'm going to um, go back to Alt and add a primary. So all of that is switching just to add another primary over here. Uh, once that, that primary is added, I'm just going to take the um, offset and crush that down in here to create a dark area. Now I need to add a mask for that to get to that mask. Um, I'll go back to my main menu and add a mask. And now you can see that my controls have, have changed to masking controls. So if I um, choose a circle or a square or a vignette, and to actually see this in the inside or outside, go back to my main menu, back to clip, and I've got to go back to my uh, other layer. And here is where I will... And here is where I will make it the mask on the inside or the mask on the outside. So back to my main menu, back to mask. Now I've got mask controls. Now the middle dials are controlling the mask. This is rotating the mask, which of course I could reset. And the middle one is positioning the mask. Here I can change the overall scale or I can change the independent scale left and right and morph that around and then the overall vignette inside here. Go back to my master clip, back to clip, back up to this clip and here I can turn that layer visibility on and off, which I could also turn on and off from the main one here. So the difference here is this layer visibility is just the vignette that I added on my new primary. This is the overall clip from raw to what I have inside here. So a lot of functionality, a lot of control. Um, hopefully you can, you can see that, that um, 
using this instead of using a mouse is uh, hugely advantageous. There is definitely some overlap in this area when you're working in modal uh, modes where you've got to jump between there. That's probably the, the, um, uh, the most difficult thing to, to get used to is the fact that you've got really there's three different areas in here or, or possibly more. Um, actually, I think there's like six different areas, two for each layer, um, two for each mode uh, to get to or one for mask, uh, alt for clip. So there's like five different modes inside here to jump around. So that's that's probably the hardest uh, thing to, for people to get used to. For controlling, um, really having these the, the dials and having the, the wheels and trackballs, there's a, a, a visceral uh, feeling happening inside here that really makes color grading incredible. Um, it, it, it makes all the difference in the world uh, when you take this away from a mouse and away from, from you know, sip, typical user interface. I just absolutely love it. But I don't have to know what it is. I don't have I don't feel right by not knowing. It doesn't frighten.